In this video, we will explore how to read the t-distribution table, its key applications in hypothesis testing and confidence intervals calculations. The t-distribution table in t-tests provides the t-critical values that are used to define the rejection region and calculate p-values, both of which are essential for making informed decisions. Let's explore the following t-test scenarios. In the first case, a two-tailed hypothesis test is conducted, this means both lower and upper critical values will be required to define the rejection region. To find these values using the t-distribution table, locate the row corresponding to 34 degrees of freedom and the column for a two-tailed significance level of 0.10. The resulting t-critical value is 1.6909. Since this is a two-tailed test, the lower critical value is minus 1.6909, and the upper critical value is 1.6909. To find the p-value, locate the row corresponding to 34 degrees of freedom. Then, identify the columns within which the test statistic of 1.43 falls. The corresponding column headings provide the range of the p-value. For this two-tailed test, the p-value lies between 0.10 and 0.20, with each tail contributing between 0.05 and 0.10. In the second case, a left-tailed hypothesis test is conducted, this means the rejection region lies below the lower critical value. In the t-distribution table, locate the row corresponding to 24 degrees of freedom and the column for a one-tailed significance level of 0.05. The resulting t-critical value is 1.7109. Since this is a left-tailed test, the lower critical value is minus 1.7109. To find the p-value, locate the row corresponding to 24 degrees of freedom. Then, identify the columns within which the test statistic of 2.44 falls. The corresponding column headings indicate the p-value range. For this one-tailed test, the p-value is between 0.025 and 0.01. For the third case, the significance level and degrees of freedom are the same as in the second test. However, since this is a right-tailed test, the t-critical value will have the same magnitude but a positive sign. This is because the t-distribution is symmetrical around its mean of zero. The p-value will also be the same because the test statistic has the same absolute value. Now, let's explore the application of the t-distribution table in constructing confidence intervals for the same t-test scenarios. In the first case, a significance level of 0.10 corresponds to a 90% confidence interval. For a two-tailed test, this will be a two-sided 90% confidence interval. To construct the confidence interval, we calculate the lower and upper limits by adding and subtracting the margin of error from the point estimate of the population parameter. The margin of error is calculated using the t-critical values. Since we have already found these t-critical values, we can now calculate the confidence interval's range. In the second case, a significance level of 0.05 corresponds to a 95% confidence interval. For a left-tailed test, this will be a one-sided 95% confidence interval. To construct this confidence bound, we calculate the lower limit by subtracting the margin of error from the point estimate. Since this is a left-tailed confidence interval, the upper limit extends towards infinity. Similar to the second case, a one-sided 95% confidence bound will be constructed for the right-tailed test. The upper limit is calculated by adding the margin of error to the point estimate and the lower limit extends towards negative infinity. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like and subscribe for more statistics content.